Hey everybody, Josh KI6NAZ here. Today we are going to be talking about the Yaesu FT4X. A nice, inexpensive, entry-level, handy talkie for amateur radio, VHF, UHF. Is this the Baofeng killer? Let's talk about it today on the Ham Radio Crash Course. Would you be interested in buying a $75 Yesu Radio VHF UHF, fairly rugged too? Well, Yesu certainly hopes so because this is their entry level radio. In fact, they've come out with a line of entry level radios, this being the cheapest, the FT4X. And it is a very simple radio. It, it does just radio things. It doesn't have extra features on it. It will work repeaters. It will work simplex. It comes with the standard accessories you would expect, and we're going to walk around that a little bit. Because of its price point, people automatically compare this to the Baofeng radio, and rightfully so because this shares a lot in common with the Baofeng. A lot of the internal circuitry, the battery configuration here on the back, even going to its connection ports on the side, are very reminiscent of the Baofeng as far as the same feature set as well, which we are going to talk about. But to start it all out, I thought we would walk around the exterior of the radio because I find this to be actually its most compelling feature. It works as a radio. It's, it's a pretty good handy talkie for an entry level ham. But the, ac the exterior of this radio is, is really nice. It feels the part. It looks like you could use this in a professional setting. It has what I call this Yesu trigger on the right hand side or your left hand side uh, for the PTT button. This is seen on the FT70, uh, a radio that's about twice the price of this. And I like it. It works well if you're wearing gloves, it has a monitor key on the left side and the function button or the long press for the menu button is also right next to it. On the right hand side, you have your exterior connections for a microphone and a speaker or a headset mic if you had a combo. The top is the combination power switch and volume control. You know I like knobs and that's a pretty good knob. Similar to a Baofeng, what is on top here? This little orange button, this is your emergency button. So if you hold that down, it does transmit. It transmits to what's called your home frequency and you can set that. Uh, you can use something like 146.520 as your home frequency. Although if you have a tendency to push orange buttons and hold them down, you may want to use something uh, that is not that frequency because you're going to put it out there on simplex or you know turn this off there is uh, two p1 and p2 buttons which are uh, pretty handy you can use these buttons to set any memory option under the deep menu so holding down the deep menu button hold it down use the arrow keys to select the memory or menu feature that you want and then you can program it to one of the p1 or p2 which I found really nice. So there's all kinds of little cool um, key bindings that you can do, well, two. <laughs> there's two cool key bindings that you can do with like a deeper set when you use the function key. That's a, a nice added feature that you'd have over a Baofeng, for instance. The back of the radio has a very nice spring that you can use for your belt. And actually, I find that the space in between the body of the radio and the belt is wide enough that you can get it over a uh, one belt, a thick belt, two belts that are stacked on top of each other, possibly a duty belt or something like that. It's well made, nicely done. There is a recessed area for the antenna on the top, and this is an SMA male connection, which is just like the Chinese radios, hence another call out to the Baofeng. And the stock antenna that it comes with is decent. I would put this antenna above a Baofeng antenna. Rounding out the outside of the radio, the radio comes with a 1750 milliamp hour battery. This is a very similar battery configuration to the Baofeng as well. It has the three connections on the back, and this connects directly to the drop-in charger. You can buy an extra one of these batteries and slide it in directly if you want to just charge a battery and swap them out. Um, and it charges drops right in, and it takes about three to four hours for a full charge. It is a fast charger. The charger itself works off of 12 volts and steps that down to 8.5, 9 volts. And so you do get a fast charge out of this. And I'll say right up front, one of my favorite features about this radio is that with it just on light duty, but with it on, I was able to run this thing for 24 hours straight, which is pretty good on a full charge. Connection to the battery is handled by a drop-in and there is a water resistant seal on the out hand, out, outer side connectors to the battery. Now regarding this radio as a radio, the ability to receive and talk again, this is a two meter, 70 centimeter radio. 
yeah. bit of a difference between this and the Baofeng. The Yesu will have a frequency set that when you set to it, and even if you're just talking on a frequency, it will automatically add in an offset for you if you're on VHF or UHF for the repeaters that you may be working. This supports PL tones so that you can access the repeater both for transmit and receive, and it can support DTMF tones if you are a repeater owner or operator and you want to key in some control via remote, via your radio, you can do that too. And for some of you, this is probably going to be the best feature. This comes with a proper manual. <laughs> Belfangs don't have these. This is a very nicely done manual, as, as I would assume you would expect of a, of a Yesu radio or Japanese, high quality Japanese radio. And uh, yeah, it, it does the job. It's, it's, it's actually relatively thick for the amount of stuff that this radio does. It, it's not that busy of a radio as far as functionality is concerned, but they seem to pack a lot of interesting quirky little things in here. And um, at the end of the whole thing, let me show you really quick, there is a graph that covers the spurious emissions. And yeah, there you go. They talk about what the spurious emissions are on this radio at its different power outputs. So nicely done, Yesu. Now this may have only uh, interest to some of you, and sparingly I assume. This does support ARTS, which is a kind of a beaconing system. So if you were to buy a fleet of these, and so uh, for those of you that may be interested in buying a couple of nice handy talkies that are entry level priced, with ARTS enabled, they will uh, beacon each other, and the second you go out of range of, of your friend or whomever has another one of these radios, it will let you know that you've gone out of your proximity range of the person that has another one of these radios, which is pretty nice. If you're using small, you know, if you're, you're at an event and you want to make sure you can stay in communication, uh, that's a good way to do so. A limited, limited uh, use case, but I thought it was pretty interesting to mention it to you. So there you go. And just so I don't forget it, because I know somebody will ask, this also does have an FM receiver. It works a little bit differently than that of the Baofeng, where there's actually a discrete button you can press. With this, when you're in VFO mode, you push the band button a couple of times until you get the tune capability, and then you just use, if you wanted to go to 95.5, for instance, you would type in 095, there'd be the point five zero zero. And then from that point, you basically get what you need to do to be able to pick up AM or FM stations. This is KUSC 91.5 FM and HD1 Los Angeles and Orange County, worldwide at KUSC.org. That's actually all there is to it. It is almost identical in feature set to a Baofeng. It has a higher price tag, but that comes with quality and signal purity. There's been a lot of discussion out there on the internet, on the QST magazine, about the spurious emissions of the Baofeng. This radio will not suffer from those problems, unless you get a defective one. This is a signally pure radio. So if you are interested in picking up a radio that is not going to put out spurious emissions based off of the FCC regulations, then this would be the first radio in the price range, really, to look at. I mentioned Baofeng Killer in the title. We're going to do a comparison against this radio and the Baofeng. What this does well, what this does okay at, and actually what this isn't good enough if you compare it to the Baofeng. One feature that you may be asking yourself is, will it abri? Yes, it will abri. This is the 24-inch abri, and actually it does a pretty good job of it. There is a collar uh, right there at the antenna mount that I thought would be a problem, but uh, it screws down pretty flush against it. Uh, up against the rubber outer portion of the Abri antenna and does fine. Works really well, just like you expect it would. And I would give a nod to this radio over a Baofeng. Sometimes with the Abri antenna, you will overload the front end of the radio when you connect it to a antenna such as this. Not so much with the Yesu, it has better quality material you know, arguably better. And it has not overloaded the front end, and I am in an area with very loud repeaters and loud simplex stations, and I haven't had it blow out on me. Have though with the Baofeng. An important feature that I think you should consider for all handy talkies that you get, that this does a pretty good job at, this is a one watt speaker, and it is, it is adequately loud for the price. It's definitely louder than a Baofeng. I'll do the best job I can demonstrating that. 
obviously the thing to keep in mind here is that you're listening to whatever mic that I put it on and then whatever compression happens in my video editing and uh, then via YouTube. So just keep that in mind. My personal opinion is that it sounds great for it being an entry level radio. Get yourself in front of one and try it out yourself though so you know for sure. Okay, that's one. Here's the next one. Hey, I am. I'm gonna set up a hundred watt station uh, Thursday afternoon. You know, you gonna be out. Full volume. Thirty nine twenty eight. You've got a hundred watt station with your Elecraft five water. Let me let me back this down so it gets you a nice five audio quality. A step up that the Yesu has over the Baofeng is it's a weather radio. Yeah, the weather channels are pre-programmed and it will do weather alerts. The Baofeng, you have to program those individually. This comes right out of the box and has that weather alert capability, which the Baofeng does not. Speaking of that front end, I know I have mentioned it many times on video that the Baofeng has particularly garbage front end. I always point people towards the FT60 that's also made by Yesu if they want a radio with a really robust front end because that radio is bulletproof as far as I'm concerned and sounds really nice. The FT4, somewhere in between there, has a better front end than the Baofeng and I'm going to try and demonstrate that as well for you. Okay, so for the receive test, we've got two radios, the Baofeng and the Yesu, both have an Abri antenna on them. I'm going to transmit with my FT, my FT2DR, uh, about a foot and a half away. Let's start with the Yesu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, radio test, radio test. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu, Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Uh, it's a bit of a distortion. Not bad, though. An area where I'd give the big nod to the FTM400 is its manual programming. It's much easier to program this radio by hand than the Baofeng. Uh, much is probably the wrong word. It is easier, I would just say. It is easier to do. Uh, it's easier for me to just logically work my way through the radio. I figured it out without needing the manual, so that's pretty easy. Uh, let me show you how easy it is to program this radio for repeater. Long press the lower menu button. We're going to go to squelch type, menu 36. Press it again once. Going to go up to T-tone, transmit tone. Again, go up two menus, transmit frequency. Again, we want 100, which is the repeater I'm gonna program. Uh, you can go out of this, and then if you just key out. Now, go to the repeater, which is uh, 449500. There they are. All right, we have the frequency the tone is set and we have the offset ready to go. Let's save it to a memory channel. Hold down the VNM button. It's trying to put it in the next open slot, which is three on this radio. This radio has 200 memory slots. Type using the keypad, K, press the function button and go to the next one. K, nine, K, A, O. And there you go. Oop, wait, what happened there? One more. There you go. K9KAO. No, oh, now we got an extra character. Hold on. And then last to lock it in, hold it down. Memory in tells you it's locked in. And there you go. So now if we go to the memories, K9KAO is set. So now you have your repeater programmed. Pretty easy to do manually. The programming aspect of the FT4X to a computer is gonna be pretty easy as well. You buy a cable for it, it's 16 to $17, so you save a little bit of money over that legit FTDI cable for the Baofeng, and it works with Chirp. You could also buy the RT system software if you like that. That's gonna run you anywhere from $35, um, maybe less if you can get a, a discount on one, and then sale prices go way up through the roof. Don't really buy it on Amazon. I even saw it on Walmart for $75. Don't buy it from there. And I will give you the negative. This is the one thing that I found with this radio that I didn't like over the Baofeng. 
this is not a dual channel, dual band radio. On the Baofeng, you get that A and B channel. So you can put your simplex on one and your repeater or something on the other and you can monitor both at the same time or actively monitor one while scanning on the other. Yesu went a different way with this. They have one primary channel and then they have like a home channel. And you can set whatever frequency you want to that home channel and then you can go off and start scanning on other on your memories, on your freq on your VFO. You can do scanning and then if there's any activity on that home channel, it'll immediately send it back over to the home channel and you can go back to talking to people or, or go back to replying to somebody on simplex. This is not acceptable for me personally. I really like this radio, but I really, really like having the dual capability. Oftentimes I don't even use it. I'll just leave it in one single frequency and, and I'll just leave it on simplex or I'll leave it on the repeater or the talk-in frequency that we're using when we're in a group of people like on the soda hike. But I like the capability of being able to split them if I were to ever change my mind. So let's say I was looking at the or I was listening to the wind system and there was no activity going on. So I wanted to go off and scan. So I would leave the wind system selected on my memory channel, go here to VM, go back to the VFO, do my little function button click on the VM button, and dual watch appears. We're dual watching on our memory channels now. So if anything comes on that winds repeater, it switches back just like you saw. Now if I hold this down, it'll start scanning. And if at any time something happens on the wind system, it will pop back over, which it's doing every so often. It's checking to see if there's any activity going. And if there's something live, it'll stay there for a second. Just scan through the weather channels. Now it's going back through VHF frequencies. So a little chaotic, but it works. In a lot of ways, this is a better radio. It's more expensive. It has better-ish hardware, better filtering. It doesn't have the spurious emissions and it has a better front end. It has a better speaker, it has a better battery, it has a better clip, at least in my opinion. Um, but that dual channel thing, that AB channel select, Man, I don't know how I feel about that one. Uh, I, I have been daily driving this as much as possible, and I have really liked it. The sound quality is good. It's a totally usable radio. If you are an amateur radio operator and you're looking to get another person into amateur radio, I think this is a really good option for that. I think that you do well by them in giving them this radio. It's not very expensive. It has a menu system that is easy to get through. It's very Yesu reminiscent to me, so I, was, I felt like I was at home. This is not a feature-packed radio. This is a daily driver, a beater radio that is capable and rugged and works the part. It is a radio. It does the job of a radio first and foremost and it does it well, I think. So to put a bow on this, the Yesu FT4X is a compelling little radio. It is moderately priced, about $75 at Ham Radio Outlet, and I think it is everything you need. I like the fact that it comes with a drop-in charger for a newbie radio. It's pretty good. Obviously, it's competing with the Baofeng, so it better, right, because the Baofeng does. Uh, in all regards, except for maybe one, that dual channel, one up and down thing that the Baofeng has that this doesn't, this excels and is better than that. I, I think it's a buy. Uh, I'll leave it up for you to decide. There's really only so much I can talk about with a radio that is just a, a radio. It is a dual band handy talkie. It has some extra features, but not a ton. It's not, um, it doesn't feel like it's ever giving you too much information or there's ever too much to learn about it. It's very straightforward. So with that, I would give it a recommendation. I would give it a buy it. Big thank you to all my patrons for making this happen. I bought this with Patreon dollars, so I'm going to give it to the patrons. I've figured out a way over on Patreon to give this to them. So big shout out to all you. I really appreciate the support. If you'd like to help me out, it's as simple as giving me a thumbs up if you like this video. And if you have not already, please subscribe. We have links to our Facebook page in the description and our Discord. I am Josh, KI6NAZ. I stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is 0100 UTC. I hope to talk to you again soon. I'll talk to you later. See ya.
an area where I would give the big knob to the FTM, where is it? This is generally what most dual band HHTs, fairly rugged VH, entry level radio, in fact, they come out, they come out 